In the next series of videos, we're going to talk about post-processing effects. So real quick, what are post-processing effects? They're basically uh, it's special control that we have over the look of our environments with our camera by applying post-effects. And the way we do this is we can go to the visual category, grab ourselves a post-process volume, and just drag and drop that into our level. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to go to wireframe mode so that you can see what it is. You can see it's just basically this big wireframe box. And if I switch from perspective to a top view, there's my box. That's the post-processing volume. You can see it, in, it envelops my entire scene here. But if I switch over to a side view, you can see it's a little bit too narrow and it's not going to cover my entire scene. And the idea is you want this to envelop your entire uh, environment or at least the area where you want to have the post process uh, effect occur. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the vertices of this guy and raise them up so that it envelops my entire scene. I'm going to leave geometry editing mode and I'm going to switch back to a perspective view. Now in wireframe I can see there's my post processing volume. It's really large and encompasses my entire scene which is what I want in this case. So the way this works is whenever the player camera is inside of this post-processing volume, inside of this box, we'll be able to see our post-processing effects. And if I select the post-process volume and look over in the details panel, you can see that there's lots and lots of different parameters and just these different categories of things that we can uh, play around with. And by default, we're using the default post-process settings in our level. But if we want to override and have complete control over some of this stuff, and you can see some of these categories are pretty cool. We've got screen space reflections and all kinds of stuff. So just to show you an example of how this works, uh, we can try out with the bloom parameters down here. And the way this works is real simple. I'm going to switch to game view so we can see this better. If you want to override something from the defaults, all you have to do is check it on. So just click on it, and you get a little check mark. Right now you can see we have some default bloom in this scene. And again, these are default settings. So I'll check on intensity. The default setting is 1, so it doesn't look like anything happened. But if I set this to 0, what you're going to see is that we, get, we pretty much turn off the bloom. If I set it to 10, I'm overdriving it really high. So 10 is way too much. I'm blowing this scene out, and you really can't see much. But um, what we'll do is we'll switch that back to one which is the default. So that's basically how this works. You place your post-process volume, and whenever the camera is inside that volume, you have complete control over the post-processing effects and the look of your game.